surprise. Yep, I am uploading a video on what is today for you. Today is a Tuesday. And uh, this is gonna be more of an experimental kind of thing. We can call this a, a marathon of sorts. So I'm gonna be doing more painting videos for you, but it's gonna be live talking. So don't expect it to be something really realistic. But what I want is to get you painting more and to get you more uh, access to painting. So I'm gonna be using uh, a lot of the copyright free pictures uh, from Pexels or Unsplash. And um, I just have a big piece of glass here and it's on an easel. And we have cotton canvas taped to it. Charcoal, mineral spirits, liquid, oil paint. If you want to know exactly what materials, please see the description box down below. So let me get started here. I like to start with charcoal these days. And oh, by the way, uh, I'm going to try and film as much as I can. Uh, but just know that there may you know, be segments where I don't speak as much, so I'll probably be a little more quiet with these uh, demonstrations than what you've seen. And I'm already keeping an eye out for the camera there. Um, I'm in a different area. I'm filming in a different area right now, so you will hear some noise that you don't normally hear. And uh, I'm aware that my arm may end up blocking some of the footage there, so I'm gonna figure out how to resolve that problem maybe at, at another time but the photo reference that I'm using for this this is from uh, Unsplash I will go ahead and link it in the description box down below so you can also have access to the same photo reference that I'm using uh, since I'm using charcoal this is a uh, willow charcoal I believe by the way um, it's not a very long thing of charcoal so that's probably why my arm is blocking the shot a little bit but uh, for the drawing I uh, don't really do much um, detail or refinement or anything like that now I will mention periodically um, if you are interested in taking online classes with me I now have that available on patreon so Please go ahead and check the description box down below for Patreon. So an indication for the eye socket. So we have eye socket, eye socket, nose, bottom of nose, article of clothing there. That should be about something workable. Something I can build on. Again, this is not going to be very realistic, but I, I find that um, painting and talking like this, though my words can get confusing sometimes, uh, I do find this to be quite fun for me. Hopefully, it's fun for you, as opposed to um, you know what I've been uploading this past month, which is the edited, highly edited versions, shorter, of course. Okay, so I'm using um, alizarin. You could use either alizarin permanent or uh, alizarin crimson, whichever. Liquid, odorless mineral spirits. Starting off with the darks. And you're probably wondering uh, why I'm working on a, a white surface. And I've actually been working on, um, if you've noticed, I've been working on white canvas for some time now. And uh, that's just because when you have a neutral gray, your lights look like lights and your darks look like darks, right? That's what everyone prefers. But I, um, I find that since the uh, depiction of form is something that you get out of the darks, the darks is what creates the form, uh, in particular the half tones. I find that though it's harder to work on this, I find that it's much more useful for me these days at least you know I always switch things up now I have the little perimeter uh, hopefully I can keep my hand in this position and uh, by the way uh, let me talk about the comments so I have finally started getting back into the comments so 
feel free to write suggestions for future paintings though I do mostly portrait I can do other things um, I just can't do figure painting on YouTube I'm gonna have to switch to something else to do figure painting but um, that's really the only limitation figure painting and obviously copyright stuff that I have to watch out for But yeah, feel free to write down things you would like me to demonstrate. We're moving a little bit beyond the tutorial type of mindset, more into demonstrations. And hopefully I will be, uh, you know, marketing my online classes. I'm really excited with how my students are progressing already in such a short amount of time. And I mean, my mentor tier I consider them my students before this even started, uh, the online classes. So those of you that are watching that have been in the mentor tier before the online classes started, I'm really proud of you. And those of you that have just joined and I um, uh, gave you some feedback on your paintings actually today, um, and today's a Monday, I'm really impressed with your starts with project one really impressed. I highly, highly look forward to giving you feedback every week on your projects. Um, so right now, you see me just kind of filling in dark shapes. I'm not really thinking that hard about uh, proportion or anything like that. This is the Alla Prima approach, by the way. My uh, students, I have them working in the classical, and uh, I will be building up my students through the classical approach for the majority of the lessons, and then eventually working them up to Alla Prima, just because this is Alla Prima, right? Um, painting wet on wet. Alla Prima is just much harder, much, much harder, but it's faster. Uh, and eventually, I think that most painters uh, transition into Ella Prima, most of them. Though there's some really wonderful classical painters that stick with, you know, typically classical. All right, so now I have to dark up the background. Okay, let me see where I can start to block in more. Let's fill in some more of the. Uh, element of clothing. Now that might be too green. Uh, let me also say that a photo reference, I consider a photo reference to be a suggestion. I don't really care if my painting looks exactly like the photo reference. And I know that's kind of harsh, I guess to say, but that's just the way it is. I want you to enjoy the process and not copy you know, it's just not that fun to copy. Just face it. If it's not fun, then why would we do it? All right, so now that I have a lot of dark uh, for that, I'm gonna switch uh, brushes, brushes here. Now you see I don't really have the color value web mixed up. And again, because this is going to be more of a demonstration than a tutorial. So I'm just going to be painting and not really, I'm not going to be that concerned with um, the narration as much. I want you just to be able to sit there and relax and paint along with me or just have this on the background. Filling in some dark accents for the placement of the features. I already see that I have to shift the nose, the center line a little bit to about there. Eh, something like that. Bottom of the mouth goes about there. Okay, so those of you that are uh, my students watching this, when you're doing project one, 
this is the complete polar opposite of the classical approach. Um, contrary to what most people will say, uh, most people put a lot of emphasis on the start. I kind of feel like you can start however you want, um, to be honest. I think it's more about the middle stages, if I'm going to be completely honest. And of course, it's just my opinion, but I feel like all approaches meet halfway, and that's the middle stages. Yeah, this is a much more loose, colorful way to work. But we will catch up to uh, what somebody would do if they started, you know, with a uh, transfer drawing and then, you know, underpainting and building up the layers like that. We'll catch up to them with the Alla Prima. And this is a very intuitive intuitive way of working. Check this out, check this out. So I, I'm saying it's intuitive. Boom. Brush stroke per brush stroke. Not worried at all. It's a very relaxing process. But I mean, there's some technical aspects to it shortly like starting from the darks now um, please feel free to let me know what you think about uh, these the prospect of having more of these demonstrations from me and that's what I'm going to call them demonstrations I'm always trying to go beyond where I've been. And you know, I've been doing the same kind of thing with uh, YouTube at least. And I just want to go beyond. And at this point, you're wondering, you know, how on earth is this ever going to look like the the photo reference? And uh, the truth is, like I said before, it doesn't bother me how similar it is to the photo reference. Rather, I'm enjoying interpreting the shapes and painting as if I had a live model in front of me, which is just not something we can do right now. And that's another part of the reason why I want to upload more videos. I want to bring something positive into the world, something beyond just, you know, it being instructional. I want to put some demonstrations out here that are fun. Now, um, I did read some of the uh, comments and um, you know if I'm you know who you are, I'm talking directly to you. You asked me about the acrylic paintings, acrylic landscape. At, at this point, I don't have my Stay Wet palette. I um, messaged you about the Stay Wet palette and how useful that is for the, uh, the acrylic paint. And uh, I wouldn't feel right doing a, a demonstration on acrylic without the proper palette, which is the Stay Wet palette. It's the one with the sponge. So those of you that are watching that want to do this in acrylic, I would highly recommend something called Stay Wet Palette.
But all right, I've been talking quite a lot now, so I'm going to be a little quiet. Just let you enjoy the painting footage. Now clearly I know that not everyone's going to have the time or the patience to watch this much painting footage so you can um, feel free to turn this into a time lapse too just by scrolling through the video or um, selecting the, uh, the option that YouTube has to change the speed of the uh, video. Though I'll, I'll probably sound like, like a, a chipmunk, my voice. If you speed up the footage, but I'm sure you would probably enjoy that.
What I want to do is keep everything workable. You notice nothing is really being rendered separately from anything else. I want to be able to just move the paint. It's like a sculptor would be moving clay. Which I'm sure you've heard before. We painters tend to repeat ourselves a lot. Now I'm starting to put in some accents. So um, accents meaning some dark, some dark darks. And I'm sitting back, constantly sitting back, or standing back. Trying to see if these relate. And if they do relate, do they relate well or not? If they don't, change it. Got to be mindful of that center line. I don't want to frontalize anything, especially not the lips. But you can always change it. I'll probably repaint the lips a few times. So right now what I'm doing is kind of just beholding the whole structure, superstructure. And then I'll be working in the half tones. With more specificity. And this is how I work from general to specific. Start with the anybody and then build the somebody. One thing you'll notice is I'm really not that timid when it comes to the uh, brush marks. I don't ask the canvas for permission to paint. I just paint. You know, if an eye is just three brush strokes, what's the problem? It's having it in the wrong place. It's just three brush strokes. You can easily move it. So there's no need to stress about it. Now, I will say pretty much the beginning is the most 
um, a scary part. You know, everything is kind of up in the air. You don't really know where you stand until you have something on your canvas. So you have colors to relate, shapes to judge. Just don't know. So that's why I think that the middle, all the magic happens in the middle. So you can easily just move an eye up. Make sure it relates. And then here's a little trick that I'll do. Just get a clean and dry brush, preferably a soft brush. And just push everything back. I refer to this as uh, painting the ghost or ghosting. So bring everything back down. And it's nice to have a layer of color like this that you can just sculpt. I'm putting the brush strokes in the direction of the uh, light source, which is coming this way. Try to reduce glare. Okay, and now hit it again. And continue to build texture.
Another thing I could have done was just take a palette knife to it. And I may do that several times until I get the, the large forms to read the way I want them to. Without the crutch of focusing too heavily on the detail. This way you will learn how to interpret photo reference just like you would a live model. But of course if you want to go even further in your learning definitely check out my online classes. And now the Color Valley web is starting to emerge there. Let me just bring the eyes down a little more, meaning just push them away. So I can get a better idea of the superstructures. It's actually not a very simple picture to work from, to be honest. Uh, most of the times you really want, or actually all the time, you really want a very clear light and shadow. Um, but since we don't really have the, uh, the uh, privilege of taking our own photo references when we're using copyright free sites, just uh, be on the lookout for that. And since I'll be using a lot of these uh, copyright free pictures, you know, for that reason, uh, I think this will be a very useful thing for you to see how I deal with this. I guess I can also refer to these as painting sessions.
And uh, for those of you on Patreon wondering about the uh, how this will affect the behind the scenes, you're actually going to see a lot more behind the scenes of my studio work and my studio process for the weekly behind the scenes. Now if I had a uh, bristle brush, like a really good quality bristle brush, I would, be, I would be using that at this point. These are just cheap Michaels brushes. I recommend Robert Simmons brushes, bristle brushes. That they're a bit pricey. I mean, I have one of them here, but from painting a lot, I mean, like a lot, it's kind of worn out. So please let me know what you think about these uh, painting sessions. I think uh, that's what I'll call this. Not sure if I'll be able to do this daily, but more frequently than once a week, I'm hoping.
I think just now we're starting to enter the um, the middle stages. And the middle stages, I think, are pretty much... It takes up the majority of your time painting. Which, again, is why I think it's the really the most important part You really want to try to relate masses of color to one another. That's why I didn't really spend that long on the um, preliminary drawing. Though it, it, it does help to draw a little bit longer at times. One of my students showed me, uh, one of my online students showed me her, showed me her um, block-in, the linear block-in for her underpainting. It was amazing. Straight lines and angles. Very descriptive. And it translated wonderfully to the poster image of her painting. I really enjoy, um, what's this color? I keep forgetting. Permanent rose. Forgetting these really bright, warm spots of color. And remember, don't worry about if it looks exactly like the photo reference. I'm sure someone's going to say, that looks nothing like the picture. And I'm going to say, well, first of all, I'm not going to say anything because I don't 
I think negativity just fuels negativity, but um, you know, I, th I think it's important to relate shape, relate shape, and, and don't feel obligated to have to copy. You can have so much freedom in painting when you don't have to stress yourself out about the literal depiction of what you're trying to show. You know, leave the literal to a literal mechanism known as a camera. Let the camera do its thing. And let's let's us painters be painters. I'm gonna see if I can cheat a little bit and use the back end of a brush. Which brush? Back end of a brush to get the highlights. Or they suggest them. Ooh, that's way too bright. But now I can just go right into the highlight and kind of sculpt the highlight. Again, I'm using liquid. And um, a question I get a lot is, uh, when do I know to use medium? And uh, I use medium when I want to thin out the paint um, rather than jumping right to the mineral spirits. And I also use medium if I want to modify the behavior of the paint. Uh, so liquid makes the paint dry faster, which is not necessarily what I want with this type of painting. But it does help sometimes when it starts to get kind of tacky um, with the liquid. I find that actually helps layer on brush strokes. I'm going to change this camera angle for the next upload so I know that my arm, my hand is blocking. I should also mention if you want to see my artwork, um, which is now, I'm now posting on a daily basis, uh, check out my Instagram, which I'll have linked down below, or you can just look up Upari. Upari Fine Art is the name. I actually named it before I had the YouTube channel. And then I started linking it with my YouTube channel. And then when I wanted to change it to your party artist on Instagram, then I had to go and manually change. I would have had to go and manually change all of those links. So I just kept it lazy. I know. Now let's move around the picture a little bit. Now I want the brush strokes to be kind of aesthetically appealing, um, but you know, it can get kind of cheesy. Uh, 
really quickly um, if I uh, try to overemphasize the brush marks or the brush strokes. So I'm not really going to do that. But I am aware of leaving some brush strokes to be kind of elegant like these. I'm just not going to make it a um, conscientious thing to over accentuate the brush strokes. And let's turn this into a dialogue too. I know I have to lift my arm so I don't block the footage at, at this point. Um, let's turn this into a dialogue too. I want I want you to comment even more on these episodes. I really want this to connect artists to one another. There's a lot of us out there that just I, I'm at fault for this. I I just don't really communicate much, and um, you know um, Nelson Shanks, one of my favorite artists of all time. Uh, would say to work on your weaknesses, work on your weaknesses, and and uh, that can also relate to life. I mean, for me, I um, let's relate this to painting first. For me, one of my weaknesses in painting is uh, plain. I feel like it's plain. Um, I feel like I have a tendency to just go and try to render things, and I don't pay enough attention to plain. That's that's one of my something I'm trying to work on in painting. Also, um, multi-figurative paintings. So, on Instagram, you, you can see um, I'm doing multi-figurative paintings now, combining photo references and um, doing a lot of stuff. You know, more creativity. Uh, like the last four YouTube episodes that you saw, just with more figures and obviously figurative painting. And um, that's something I couldn't do before. Before I was just, um, you know, head and shoulders like this, and that would be it. But now, in in my uh, paintings, you know, I I love waking up in the morning and going right to work in uh, multi-figurative paintings, large paintings. And now, with the inclusion of this, um, this may actually be. Though it's going to be more videos, it may actually be easier for me to do this. And I can have a chance to talk with you more. Because with this, I don't really have to do much editing. Just more painting. That's the goal. Less computer work and more painting. So for instance, right now, lots of liquid, thin out the paint. And you typically want a window near you. And um, I actually do have a window near me. Though it's not open at the moment, which I guess it should be, but um, you want a window around you when you're working with liquid in particular. Uh, because of the smell. This is why I prefer Neo McGilp, but I, again, I I need to get unlazy and order Neo McGilp from Jerry's or something. And right now, at this stage, I still consider this early middle stages, and the video has been going on for a long time. Um, it may be kind of difficult to edit this. Let me add some more paint. 
just because it's going to be a a massive file, uh, massive files to edit. So we'll see how this goes. My my goal is to create painting sessions for you. Look at that, the thick paint. You can just move it. It's so fluid, so fun to use. And you get this kind of freedom after you've had a lot of training, a lot of hours. And again, that's something I want to, I want people to have, especially my students. I mean, I want everyone to have this freedom, but my students, I actually have tremendous joy in knowing that I'm going to be able to build them up. And they will be experiencing this kind of freedom with the paint. But having a strong foundation is what really enables you to say what you want to say in your paintings. And sometimes it's a message that's not verbal. It's weird to think about. It's very weird. It's like imagining a color that, that you know, imagining a color that doesn't exist in the visual realm. It's weird to think about. It's that kind of ethereal, out of this worldness. Such freedom. And I want to watch out for the uh, edge quality, not just the sharpness or softness of the edge, but the actual shape of the edge, like the silhouette. I don't want it to just be a just a line straight down, which is something I kind of messed up in with my last uh, painting. I had a corner that was just too sharp and too um, just too sharp.
and um, to speak a little bit about painting surfaces this is not the ideal one for me um, you know if I had put a couple of layers of gesso and sanded it you know it would be nicer why would it be nicer it'd be nicer because uh, it would be more smooth actually like a smoother surface because it glares less and when you add more gesso in particular Liquitex Liquitex professional acrylic um, it uh, the paint sticks more but I have a huge roll of uh, I guess not a huge roll but I have a roll of uh, uh, Frederick's cotton cotton duct so I'm just going to be chopping it up into, this is about an 8 by 10 so I have as many painting surfaces as possible. And I'm really saving my gesso for studio paintings. Uh, for, I call them painting paintings. Which is the stuff that my patrons see in the behind the scenes. Yeah, these are the cheap Michaels brushes. You, you know a brush is cheap, like when you, uh, well this one is a bad example, but these brushes, the top part usually falls off, which is why they, these have the tape, it's painter's tape. But I mean, I'm not really that, uh, I guess I might not be a good example with this, but I'm not very uh, particular about brushes. I'm more particular about uh, the paints that I use. And I find if I want to, if I want, I could do this. Like I can move something with my hand. Yeah, I know it's liquid. I'm just using liquid. And it's not the safest thing to do, but you know you can use your hands with gloves. If you're curious about the uh, the safer alternative to this, which is the uh, water mixable oil paints, I have been experimenting more with them before I... Uh, well, if you're on Patreon, then you already know uh, what I've been doing with that. But um, yeah, I've been experimenting more with the water mixables. And uh, if you're interested, I can make a video about that, but you must comment so I can know.
need a sharper brush for that. I'm gonna go, gonna go ahead and clean this one. I'm really thinking of how this reads from a distance. My battery's about to die, so can make this brush stroke quick. What you do to one side, you want to do to the other. You know that bilateral symmetry. Except I just messed that up. Well, dang. That moment when you put down a brush stroke and when you're sitting like three feet away, it works perfectly and then you stand back and you're like, what on earth? Yeah, that's why it's important to stand back. Now I gotta change the battery. Battery has been changed and I changed the uh, light sensitivity on the camera. So hopefully you can see some more of the uh, values. It's a good thing I stood up though. Uh, what is that? Definitely uh, did something wrong there. There. And now the, uh, the liquid is starting to make the paint settle in. Uh, the, the layer underneath starting to settle in, which is something I actually like as I start to build more layers. Now obviously it's not completely dry, but it's, uh, it's a little more sticky. Which is great. I'm gonna sit back again. I usually try to sit back. Currently I'm staring at the screen on the camera to see what sticks out. A lot of things stick out. Um, but I guess I have to pick and choose my battles. This edge was too sharp. The more I think about it, I think I'm going to call these painting sessions. You know, I used to run a portrait painting group um, in Howard County, Maryland, before all this stuff happened. I really miss that group. So uh, if you're watching uh, any, of, any of you from the group, I hope all of you are doing well, or I hope you're doing well. So um, let's see if we can turn these videos into something like that for everyone. Painting sessions for everyone. Hopefully if you like me enough, then you will want to take a class with me on Patreon.
What is up with that? That iris is kind of like moving too far to the corner there, so let's go ahead and let's fix that. Again, I can't promise that I'll upload uh, videos like these, uh, painting sessions like these every day. I want to, um, because I, I mean, I paint every day anyway. I just don't know if it's technically possible with the file sizes. I do have a backup plan in case my computer finally decides to die. Uh, I can use the YouTube app, but then the quality won't be as good because it'll be through my phone. And um, like Nelson Shanks would say, um, find form with freedom. Oh, how am I going to make this brush stroke? That's not freedom. <laughs> I need to be like moving my hands around and wah, perfect mark. But uh, I don't have the dexterity for that. Also, uh, drink coffee. I find the coffee kind of messes me up with my coordination with my hands, but um, I usually can't really stay awake without it. I mean, I don't drink coffee every day, nor do I drink more than, uh, say, two cups a day, but it, it does mess with my the stability of my hand. That's not what I was trying to get at with Nelson Shanks. Um, another thing he said that I already said before, but I'm going to reiterate, is um, to work on your weaknesses. Work on your weaknesses. Um, because it's easy to just stick with familiar territory. It's so tempting to just stick with what you're familiar with. And I'm actually not comfortable, that comfortable, uh, filming and talking on camera, I'm not that comfortable with that. But um, you know, I found that I want to produce the type of material for people that I personally would enjoy. And it seems that a lot of you enjoy um, longer videos, uh, less edited. It seems like that. Uh, let me know in the comments. But of course, I can't really, I can't please everyone. Um, I personally find that I enjoy this, watching this type of video from other artists uh, more than a shorter edited one. My own preference, and I'm talking about uh, Studio and Kaminati in particular, the school that Nelson Shanks started. Uh, if you go to their YouTube channel, uh, if you've never heard of Studio and Kaminati, uh, look it up. Please look it up on YouTube and write a comment down that Yupari Artist Channel sent you there. Uh, I would like them to know that I'm representing them. I really do. I do appreciate the way that they they teach. And I did go to that school when I was um, 20 years old about what? Almost 10 years ago now. But yeah, they have uh, three uh, Facebook Live events that are, are available for you to see on, uh, on YouTube. And I find myself constantly re-watching and re-watching. And I like having that footage 
playing while I'm working in the studio, oddly. It's a great balance for me to listen to the artist commentating, well, the commentators talking about the artwork. Sometimes just having someone painting there, like having painting footage there, uh, while I'm painting, even if I'm not clearly not painting the same thing or the same type of thing, uh, I actually enjoy that. I, I enjoy having like the presence, someone's presence there with me. It, it helps me feel less isolated. So that's what I want for you. That's what I want to provide for you with these painting sessions. Of course, I'm making, I'm exposing myself a lot with these videos uh, because in, in terms of the art market, you don't really, what I heard from, actually, I got this advice from one of the Incominati demos. Um, the, uh, one of the models was talking and uh, he, he's like, he's uh, the director or uh, he's like the head of the fine art connoisseur magazine. I hope it's him that was talking, or it might be someone else, but either way. One of them said that as artists, you should only show your best work online. And boy, I messed that one up. <laughs> because all of these videos, the paint-alongs, they don't show my best work. They just don't, because it's impossible to do my best work in such a short amount of time. So... I'm doing this more for your viewer experience. And I mean, obviously I'm hoping that you'll take online classes with me crossing my fingers. I really want to teach more people online. I mean, obviously, I want to make a living, clearly. Um, and I think it's possible. I, I like to be positive, you know, positive thinker, because I find that positivity is contagious just as negativity. And why emit negativity when you can emit positivity? And I just love painting more than anything. Find the older that I get, the more I love painting. I want to share that experience. I want that to be my mission. Oh, a spider just landed on me. <laughs> Hello, spider. I want that to be my mission. But it would be impossible without the, without you, without the viewers, without patrons. Just wouldn't work.
and also comment down um, topics you would like me to talk about during these painting sessions. Even if I'm not demonstrating the exact thing, um, you know, like you, you asked me about the acrylic landscapes, um, I can still talk about it. You know, um, when it comes to form or color or something like that, I can still talk about it. It helps to have kind of topics to talk about. Maybe I'll write them down over here in the future or something. I'm going to stand back again. Okay, so clearly in the picture, this is a little bit lighter. And um, I think it works fine the way it is now, but I think I'm going to experiment. stand back make sure that it that this value doesn't get as light as this value I'm gonna stand back again and I think I can make this value a little lighter Maybe that, not that much lighter, but a little lighter. Somewhere about there. So this makes more sense. This is a little bit lighter. This is a little bit lighter. And now this is pulling away from this. So that kind of helps the composition. I also see that that neck is too wide. Let's see. It's one of those moments where we can fix that with one brush stroke. If only I had a clean brush. I clean my brush. Let's see. Yeah, I don't even think I used the burnt umber yet. Interesting. All right, let's do this. Almost, almost one brush stroke. This actually is a little less prevalent. Let's move this up.
So with Draper, you want to look for rhythms. So like this one going here, and another going and kind of shooting out from here. Now I'm going to sit back again. So there's a little bit of noise up here that doesn't quite agree with the form that I'm seeing, so I'll adjust it. I mean, clearly her flesh tone is a little darker here, uh, but it, it still has to follow the form. I mean, my shapes and values. My shapes of values I need to follow the form. I'm going to sit back again. Remember that the photo reference is linked in the description box down below, so you can actually uh, you can actually look it up and paint along with me and post your image on um, either the Facebook photo reference group or, or on Instagram. I'd love to see it. I just have so much joy whenever, you know, I hear someone saying that my, or I read someone saying that uh, my videos has, have helped them find more motivation to paint. You know, someone tells me that they haven't painted in uh, four or five years or sometimes even ten years and then they see my videos and then they all of a sudden start painting again. That that makes me teary-eyed happy. Makes me feel like my life has a purpose. Now one thing I have to watch out with these longer uh, episodes, these um, painting sessions, is the card. I have a 128 gigabyte card, which I may end up feeling completely. I'm not careful. But at this point, I don't know if I lost any footage, which is possible, but at this point, um, I have filmed everything. All right, that was just uh, me trying to make things soft, which is what I'm trying to avoid. I'm trying to be more planar. One way to be more planar is the way you apply the paint. That, like a chisel.
And if you're new to all this, remember, um, plane is nothing more than just a, um, a made-up word to describe a uh, surface, a flat surface in space that has a specific angle in relation to some kind of light source. Let's throw in some of the hair now, just for fun. I'm referencing someone. Can you can you guess who it is? Just throw in a few little curls here, just to have fun. I'm going to stand back. Clean the brush. This is a very difficult spot for me to paint. Sometimes if you have difficulty painting um, an area, paint something next to it. So that's what I'm going to do. That's my bones cracking. <laughs> Make sure to stand back and stretch along with stand back and squint. And clearly, I don't expect everyone to watch every second of this. So, um, you know, feel free to scroll through this as you like. And uh, remember, you can use this as a like a painting companion. This video. While you're painting in your own studio or your home, your living room. Or I don't know. I just hope that this video provides something positive to you.
Gonna stand back again. Okay, there's my tendency to start rounding things out. You can create a lot of depth without blending anything, just observing plane. Takes a lot of effort to work that way. But the results are usually really nice when one can do that. So now I'm just squinting at the image to help eliminate detail and figure out where to go with my painting. Now here's where it starts to get tricky uh, because now we're pretty much approaching the final stages of an Alla Prima painting. Um, and I, in my own studio paintings, I actually don't like to make the faces or anything that uh, quote unquote realistic, like a photograph or something like that. Usually if I'm working with a live model, then I will push a little further uh, in terms of trying to make a more realistic painting but I am um, you know, more interested in at least in my own studio paintings and um, like a type of narrative or some kind of uh, visual I don't know what the word is uh, just something compelling so for instance uh, with my studio paintings I have multiple figures going on like multiple figures and really interesting poses um, which of course you'll see on Instagram and backgrounds and all this stuff and it's a lot of fun 
And it's, it's not something that... It's, it's just not that fun, in my opinion, to just try to go in and recreate a photograph. There, I'm trying to make things soft again rather than doing this going in with a plane. So, you'll, you'll see me constantly try to combat that tendency that like tendency to noodle in an area instead of just. Phew. And don't worry, I'll, I'll fix this uh, camera angle for the next video. There's something on her nose here. I don't know what it is. I think it's a piece of dry paint. Her eyes are almost like a phthalo, like a phthalo green. But I don't have that color here, so ultramarine and sap will have to do.
I'm actually moving this eye a little to the right. Probably like a millimeter. Or even less. But I just feel like it has to be a little closer. And this is all done through comparative measurement. Meaning just looking at something and comparing it to something else. And, and that's how I'm going about drawing. Rather than, you know, tracing something. Which there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do. If you want to use a grid, that's okay. Um, it's just, uh, I find this more fun. I'm going to stand back and see if that works at all. Kind of. I also had this a little too wide. Something was definitely off and still off with this eye. Probably going to get a lot of dislikes for the lighting. Sorry. Oh, there's a little bit of a top plane for her lower eyelid here. I don't pretend to know everything, of course. I'm exploring at this point with the paint. Which is something you don't normally see with me. You don't normally see footage of me painting and being quiet for so long. Okay, I'm going to shut off the camera and think a little bit. So I'm going to stand back and squint and think a little. And I just took the picture for Instagram. So remember, if you want to see uh, more of my artwork, please check out my Instagram. And of course, if you would like to take online classes with me, please go to my Patreon account and join the membership tier. And along with the mentorship tier, you also have access to, um, you know, the approved photo references that I have for each of the projects that my students are, are doing. But you also have the option of weekly feedback. So if you are one of my online students on Patreon at the moment, remember that you can create the projects that, um, uh, for, for instance, right now, Project 1, you can work on Project 1 as long as you'd like to. You can start it whenever you would like to. And if you're interested in taking uh, online classes with me, you can start Project 1 at any time you would like to. And if you're watching this in the future, there's probably multiple projects now. So feel free to select whichever project you would like. And remember, you have the option of sending me an image each week for student teacher feedback. Again, I hope that this video uh, is insightful to you. I hope it helps you out. And um, I know it's a little different than the usual. Uh, this is more of a painting session 
uh, type of thing. Also paint along style, but a little less paint along, more painting session type. So that being said, if you would like to support this channel even more, I know I've mentioned it a lot, but please check out my Patreon account. If you want to see more of my artwork, please go to my Instagram. And if you would like to see more videos such as this one, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Remember to leave a comment down below. I promise I'm going to be looking at the comments much more now. And leave suggestions for topics that you would like me to cover. Um, you know, such as uh, like edge quality. I can, uh, I got a soft, nah, we'll just leave it. <laughs> edge quality, I can talk about edges, I can talk about color, I can talk about anatomy, I can talk about structure, I can talk about cars, I can talk about ball pythons, I can, <laughs> I can talk about whatever you would like me to talk about. I just hope that this will add something positive to your, to your life. I don't know the schedule yet if I'm going to be uploading this uh, type of video seven days a week. Most likely I don't think I'll be able to, um, but I'll try to upload these as much as I can. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode.